What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So I just got home. I just finished watching the developer update here for Diablo 4. I know a lot of information is already out there, but it just sucks. I had to work all day, so I couldn't bring it to you just promptly. But I figured I would kind of just recap a lot of the important things from the patch notes or at least stuff I'm concerned about and just kind of give you my overall thoughts. Now, I'm not going to go down into everything uh, specifically, I'm just going to kind of highlight a lot of the changes that they made because the majority of these updates are still the same from the PTR with some changes. So um, let's talk about a few things real quick. So we're just going to go down from this and um, just talk about a few of the stuff here because there's a lot of information in these patch notes uh, now, and I just feel like they're going to be... Um, even there's just going to be like really big patch notes every single season because there's just so much going on. Um, so a lot of this stuff hasn't changed. So tempering um, a few things here. Um, masterworking will no longer fail, which is kind of interesting. The masterwork animation um, has been changed. You can skip it, which is cool. Um, there's been various UI improvements, right? Um, the hell tide and pit. This was a huge concern. I'm glad they put these right up here at the top. Because prior to the party member that spends the rune shards gets 100% of the mass working materials and the rest of the party gets half. So before, when you were in a party, you would get 20% of this. So the party members weren't even getting 50. Now they get 50%. So this is much better. And then as the person who started it, you get pretty much all the loot. Um, artillery blast and artillery and blast waves no longer spawn, which is weird. Um, Hellborn chances have been increased. Baneful heart drop rates are increased. Also, cinders in the hell tides have also been increased to make it feel much better when you're running through hell tides. So that's huge. Um, better loot drops from the Blood Maiden, etc., that are from some of those like mini bosses in the hell tides. So very good. Um, they've changed a lot of the tempering affixes for overperforming and underperforming stuff we knew that we were going to get a lot of balancing um things coming to this season so the permanent changes so that's kind of nice uh minimal le levels to equip sacred and ancestral items so 35 for sacred 55 for ancestral very very nice okay all right uh game updates the ptr all the changes from the PTR have been highlighted in red. That's why I say if you guys really want to read through this, you can. The majority of it is the same from the PTR with these changes. So, um, Hellborn, Helltide. So, all this stuff is pretty much the same. Uh, most of it. Uh, let's see. Let's scroll down here. Um, now, the new general item. So, nothing changed on Tyrael's Might, which is a uber unique. Then we got Zen's Blessing, the Boots. So we got an increased buff here and then a buff on the seconds. Very, very strong. Uh, let's scroll down to the Barbarian. So Barbarian did receive a slight nerf to the Dust Devils. So we go from three Dust Devils to five. And then you can also see like there's a tool tip here that just shows. They give a really good example of the Barbarian and how the like Dust Devils look. You guys can see this right here, right? <laughs> So let's mute this. So, or no, this is this is the, that's the wrong one. That's for uh, for the for the uh, rogue there. It's in here somewhere. I wanted to kind of highlight this to you. Okay, here we go. So you can see on the left here that this is from the PTR. The dust levels are everywhere. Now they've changed it to this on the right. So this will really help you guys for everybody that's going to be playing Barb, which is pretty much everybody coming next season because Barbarians are still the best class in the game. So they did change how this looks, which is nice. So there's a slight nerf to the Barbarians, um, which is, is probably good, but it still doesn't matter because just one Dust Devil probably does 100 million damage, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Druids, we got a small nerf to uh, Mauling. Which the increase is is actually kind of nice, um, but then we gain it's actually a buff, so we gain another percent, which is really nice. Necromancer, our skeletal priests deal more damage and stun, which is cool. Um, Rogue rapid fire, the scoundrel kiss, which you guys saw, they changed that. Now the fire uh, rapid fire now lobs doing increased damage. Um, now the pattern is more predictable, which makes it easier to use the skill. Uh, the saboteur signet um, has been. Uh, nerfed. 
Uh, Sorcerer, I'm playing Sork. I'm a Sork main, so this is probably the one that really, really sucks. We knew nerfs were coming, but... So, developer note, extra explosions from the aspect of Frozen Orb do not trigger this effect. As the unique calls out casting, this unintended interaction was fixed since the PTR. So, what this means is, is that cat the new Fractured Winter Glass says casting Frozen Orb has a chance to spawn a conjuration when it explodes. And then on a lucky hit, your conjurations have a chance to launch Frozen Orb. But then in the PTR... If a conjuration also launched a frozen orb, that new frozen orb also had the chance to spawn another conjuration, and then you just had the continuous ripple effect. Now, because it says it has to be casted, you will no longer get the additions from the conjurations actually spawning a frozen orb, which is about a 30% nerf which is what you see here on our damage. So our damage has also been nerfed, which is, I, I don't know why I have both happened, right? Like, so if, if we have this to, to launch a, a, a frozen orb, why not just give us the hundred percent if that's just where it ends, right? Cause the conjurations are going to launch that hundred percent frozen orb and then that's it. Because then I have to recast the skill in order for the conjurations to spawn. So now that this is quote unquote fixed, not only do we lose the additional damage from the conjurations spawning, exploding, and we get the, you know, the ripple effect there, but now the chance has actually been reduced. So it's like a double nerf to Sork. Um, it, yeah, it, it's a, it's a bummer. I mean, we knew nerfs were coming, but this is, this is like pretty bad. I was really excited to just kind of like launch frozen orb and just play that like as the main build all season, but I'm probably going to go back to meteors now. And this, now this build just doesn't have the same appeal as it did from the PTR, um, which is a bummer because the build was incredibly strong and, you know, it gave us something else to kind of at least be, you know, about five tiers under barbarian because barbarian, they, you know, they're doing 10 million damage at level 20. So we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. But anyway, Flame Weaver Gloves uh, now splits into uh, three instead of four. So a slight nerf there and then buffed uh, and then damage buffed to 30 to 70% from this. So, so we lose one fire bolt, but we get more damage. So that's a nice little buff. Uh, balance updates. All this is the same. Razor Plate got some changes. Do people even use Razor Plates? Let me know down in the comments, guys. Assimilation. Uh, this got a buff. I don't. Know, I don't think anybody's ever used this uh, aspect in its existence. Uh, hectic cooldown reduction has been reduced from two to four to one to two. Monsters will deal more damage at higher levels, but the relative damage reduction will remain the same from level one hundred onward. This change was made to account for level two hundred bosses. So the hectic aspect. That's a real bummer for just in general. But that you know it is what it is. Um. Let's see. This is... Oh, so damage reduction. So this is all the buffs that the classes get to their companions. So Necro, Barb, Druid, and Sort companions now receive 100% of player attributes. Um, and then here's all the changes to it. So all slight buffs. Kind of nice. Hopefully um, Necromancers will actually be a Necromancer instead of it being Bone Spear four seasons in a row. Uh, Barbarian, um, additionally, following updates have been applied. So the maximum number of dust devils that can be received or be active now is 15. Um, dust devils now move more quickly and dissipate sooner. Again, even though this is here, it doesn't matter. Each dust devil does 100 million damage. So barbs not nerfed. Uh, can you tell I'm salty about barbs? Um, so the triple amount of dust devils created if double swing is cast twice within two seconds. Now casting double swing creates dust devils that deal additional damage. So now you just don't even have this effect, right? Um, aspect of fierce winds, dust devils created goes from five to three. We already knew about that change. Uh, Fields of crimson damage is increased. Nice buff. Ancient oath buff. Pretty cool. Wariness buff. Very nice. The wolves got buffed. Hurricane got buffed. This is hilarious. I think it goes... I think the 134% to 187% changes it from the 13 damage or 17 damage that Rax did 
at 134. I think it changes it to 20. Maybe 25 damage at 187% increased damage. I think it makes it... I think this makes it 25 damage. Instead of the 11 or whatever the Rax meme is. Uh, let's scroll down. Supreme uh, Lacerate. Uh, they're, man, the devs are trying really hard to get people to use this. Um, it looks like it got a slight change, which is cool. Uh, let's scroll down. Waxing Gibbous. Life on kill replaced with Spirit on kill. This is actually a very good change. Um, bonus movement duration increased from 5 to 8 seconds, which is very, very good on Decompose. Shadow Mages. Uh, they fire a bolt every 3 attacks down from 4, so that's a nice buff. Bone Mages uh, now cast Bone Splinters or Bone Spear every 6th attack. It can be either, which is very, very good. Um, instead of the chance, now it just happens. Super strong. Uh, let's scroll down. Littlest Wall. Lucky hit chance is increased by 5%. Bloodless Scream. Increased damage or essence gain. Very, very strong. I still don't think people really use that. But Dominate Glyph. Change. Uh, reduced. So damage per 5 willpower reduced from 39% to 14 So wow. Overpower. So this is something I never understand. But maybe you guys let me know down in the comments. So... We got one season where we buffed Overpower, and then we've spent the last two seasons nerfing it. So, what? Like, I don't know why it was even changed. Why not just leave it as it was then, instead of buffing it and then nerfing it twice? So now it's it's actually worse. It's actually worse than what it was before the the original buff happened. I know this is just a glyph, but I mean that sucks for overpower players. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh so now Uncanny Treachery goes self. When self breaks, you deal, you gain 10 to 15% dodge chance. Yikes, what a nerf. Um escape harvest number of attacks uh dodge reduced from two to seven to two to five. Nerf. Uh smoke grenade cooldown nerfed. Uh, the maximum number of active Aerostorm remains five. Can you even get this to five? I don't even know if you can. Uh, when using concealment, resistance and max uh, resistances and max resistances have been increased. Um, unique items: the the boots damage reduction has been in or actually been is that a buff? Damage bonus reduced, so nerf energy restored, buffed. Eagle horn buffed. Sky Hunter buffed. Uh, let's see. All right. Ice Armor nerf. All right. Uh, Conjuration skills nerfed. Or damage reduction nerfed. Staff of Liam Neeson change. Tal uh buffed. That's very nice. Flame Scar buffed. Man, they really want us to use that. Uh, use Incinerate. Staff of Endless Range, buff or Endless Rage. This is really good for Bouncy Bouncy Fireball. Esu's buff, very nice. These are all the potions. Uh, and then user interface. You know what is actually really funny here? The gauntlet, now it's officially just gauntlet and not trials. Players who earn the seal of worthy for a given week now have a 100% chance to be rewarded with a unique item. I mean, this is just okay. This is just okay at best. Um, to be honest, if you just play the game for a week because you want to do the gauntlet at like 100 with your like decked out build, right? So you'll probably find way more uniques than just getting a random one. But what's even more hilarious is boss monsters won't drop a shrine if they've been regenerated by the pillar of proving. So when you kill a boss, you take a shrine, you go respawn him, you go kill him. He doesn't drop another shrine now. I, to be honest, devs, I'm not trying to be too critical. Just remove this. Just take the gauntlet out. I mean, I don't even, like, you guys let me know down in the comments if people are even playing the gauntlet. I don't even know if they are. Um, but in my humbling opinion, um, I would probably just remove the gauntlet altogether. I would just scrap it. Uh, I would just scrap it and just bury it deep, deep under Blizzard and just never give us something like this again um 
Those are the, this is the list for the Nightmare Dungeon rotations. And then miscellaneous. Okay, <clears throat> so a few more things to kind of talk about here. Um, with the the changes in the dev stream. So uh, we got some changes to the Helltide. Let's talk about the new seasonal quest line because they did make a change. If you do notice over here, uh, whenever you're competing in a Helltide, so we got the seasonal journey. This is similar to what they did in season two, season three, right? Where as you're just like battling in the Helltides, you gain the Wolf's Honor, which eventually unlock all these items. At the end, this is a Resplendent Spark. So you're guaranteed one Resplendent Spark from completing the Wolf's Honor um, seasonal quest line. You also get a Resplendent Spark by defeating Lilith. So now there's actually a reason to fight her. Uh, and then the third Resplendent Spark you can get is from defeating your very first level 200 um, uber boss, um, which we see from like Andariel. Uh, you can see fighting from Andariel or Varshan. It doesn't matter which level 200 boss it is, which is really nice. So you have a chance to get three resplendent sparks just from those. And then whenever you get your first uber unique, if it's not the one that you want, so let's say it's a Shaco and you don't want a Shaco, you want a grandfather. If you did the other three first, defeated a level 200, defeated Lilith, completing the Iron Wolves quest line, then you get that. If you salvage it, now you can create any one you want, but you still have to find one first. So I guess this is a way to guarantee that you get one uber unique of your choice, no matter what in the season, as long as you do those three activities. In addition, they did make some changes here. So now you can see that the cost of the uber version the level 200s have been reduced. All of these used to be five, um, like the gurgling head, not the, the stones, but like the normal resources all used to be five apiece, and you would get very lackluster rewards, so they have buffed that. Now the re reduction is down to three of each of the items, and then you get five times the rewards, which is very, very nice. So it's good there to kind of help um, when you're doing these like boss laddering farming. In addition to the farming to get the items to actually kill these bosses, they have increased the drop rates of all of the boss materials that you can get from just doing any activities in the game. So Nightmare Dungeons, Tree of Whispers, Hell Ties, etc. They've increased those drop rates, which is really, really nice. Um, on top of that, there's not a whole lot left in, in here. We've learned about a lot of the major system changes. Uh, there is one final change that I do want to mention, and that is the uh, armor. So there is a big armor change that is in the game now, which is very, very important uh, because we always under like we always had a very mis like a misunderstanding of how armor worked. Um, not necessarily with the damage reduction at eighty five percent, but the like, what is the cap that we needed to get to? So we talk about it here. Armor is confusing. I'm just going to skip up to this. So they've changed it. So, for example, these are actual numbers in the game. So the cap is still 85%. At level 50, you need to have your armor at 5,200. Level 100 needs to be 9,200, and then you reach the cap. Obviously, when you're going up higher and you're fighting higher monsters, the, these numbers are still going to go increase as you're fighting high-level monsters. But at least these are these are official numbers in the game. So at 150, you need to beat at 12,000, basically 13K. So we can see here on the tooltip, um, they did say in the dev stream that we will have a tooltip to tell us you know, hey, are we at that cap? Um, there's going to be additional change to this. So at 15K, you can probably fight a level 180 monsters, roughly. So uh, this way, with the tooltip, we'll be able to change certain affixes off of gear. So like, hey, I hit the cap. Level 100 will be 90. Was it 9200? It will be 90, 9200. So at level 100, the max armor you need is 9200 very easy to get so that way you can change affixes on other gear pieces um so that is the very last change guys so yeah these are just my like overall thoughts uh i think that we're in the right direction it sucks for some of the nerfs but we're really gonna have to get in there and just try the dev stream or the dev stream play the game and just see really how it feels with all of these additional changes so uh 
yeah, I'm very, very excited about season four, regardless of my criticism. Um, I just really want this game to be good. And I really want this game to thrive because it's, I, I know I've talked to people in the comment section about this and it really sucks that like as a grinder where each season you've just done everything you can do in a month and then there's nothing to do for two, two and a half months until the next season. So I'm really hoping that the changes here in season four will help prolong activities in the season and give more purpose to like the fantasies that I want to do with my characters, uh, you know, with the builds and just trying out new things because yeah, I mean a month in you've done it all. You're like, you've done every build on all five characters and there's just nothing left to do. So I know for the casuals, this is not a slight at any of the casuals. And I know that the casuals, you know, Hey, I work a full-time job and grind and I know people have other responsibilities, etc. all that. And they can only play for a couple hours. So in, in that sense, then it's perfect. Right. But for someone who wants to blast the game and really take on the challenges of the end game and just really maximize their experience, we need a lot more stuff to do. The PTR was a really great example. So I'm really excited to test out all the brand new changes, but yeah, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video. Let's get this to 50 likes. The goal, we got 25 on our last video. Let's make sure we get this to 50 or higher to reach the goal. That'd be fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.